Welcome everyone and good afternoon. I hope your lunch wasn't too heavy and <laughs> you get uh, awake with this talk. Uh, like the video said, deep fakes, uh, fake news and social media has been in the news for a decade or so. In the recent past, it's become a very emotional, angstful idea. Taylor Swift, Rashmika Mandana, Sachin Tendulkar, the US elections, the Indian elections. These are depleting the fabric of our society. It's not the question of how much fake is there, but how bad it is. Israeli historian Yuval Noah Harari has called this information warfare and its ethical implications are devastating personally and as a society. In fact, the Economic Forum says that AI-generated misinformation and disinformation comprises 53%, second only to extreme weather. So let's start this discussion. Welcome, panelists. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I think we should start it with the social implications and uh, why don't you, Saptami, tell us a little bit about what you've observed and if there are any experiences you'd like to share. Yelrugo namaskara. Yelrugo uta maadi. Nidde maad bedi ashte, please kate skoli namata darna. Ma'am, like you said, it has become such a social issue today. For example, we as celebrities, we are easily available to everybody. And then it is a choice also that, you know, that we put out our lives out there. Uh, even though we have a very professional life and a personal life, the line between the two is very thin for us. Uh, there are times that, you know, our, they cross over. Our professional lives, our personal lives do cross over. And everybody thinks that, you know, they have a say in our personal lives more than our professional lives. Yes. For example, I don't know, Ilyas Jana Big Boss Nortiranta, but I feel Big Boss is such a huge hit on such a huge platform today because everybody gets to say what this person or that person is doing on their personal lives. Everybody is interested in, as to judge a person. We easily judge a person today. And our pictures, our videos, be it with consent or without consent, is there on social media today. And for them to pick up something and use it for their own likes, gains, comments, is such a sad thing because they don't understand that we also, irrespective of us being in front of people, or, you know, talking to, you know, people on a daily basis or, you know, having communication with them. Back home, we also have a family. And we've also been brought up with the same values that everybody has. No parent will teach the kid, go cheat in an exam. Do this, be a, you know, thief. Nobody says that, no parent says that. So when something like that of a child is seen by a parent, today I'm, I'm sure, even parents have Facebook, they have everything today, everything, they're all on social media. So imagine they sleep, they wake up and they see the child, their own child's video or picture being, you know, used like this. It is heartbreaking and for us to take it, you know, like when you're 25, you're, you're just above, your, you know, you're 25, you're trying to build your career. It not only, of course, you know, there are ways that you can get the video down, you go to the cyber crime, you do all that. But at the end of the day, when you go back, you know, to sleep, nothing, nothing of that matters except what it's done to you mentally, emotionally and psychologically. Because you can't go back to sleep. How, see, I can give an explanation today to my parents saying, it nan Allah, it nan maadilla, e video nan dalla. But I cannot give the same explanation to the other 10,000 or the, you know, one lakh. And India is such a populated country today, they have their own opinions. I can't go telling each and every person, please change your opinion about me. And I, I don't think I, I, I should do it too, but it's also the responsibility of the person. I think it's just that we need to be a little empathetic. The word is empathetic, be empathetic. Would you be okay if something of yours came that way? Would you be okay if somebody commented on your picture or video that way? So have you uh, heard of anybody who's 
had some kind of an experience? Uh, like like recently, I was just, you know, going through social media. In social media only, I came across that Noura Fatehi. She made an entire deep fake advertisement using a very popular brand to show how easy it is to trick people into just clicking on that. You know, Lululemon is a big, very, very big brand in the Europe. And she made a, uh, you know, a website saying Lululemon and uh, all, the entire website was made on deep fake. Her entire, you know, the advertisement, the pictures used on the uh, website and everything. And they had so much traffic on the website and people clicking on the website. And these are all clickbaits, you know. So it is so easy to have anybody believe anything. Like before they used to say, you know, like WhatsApp forwards you used to get, oh, this is happening in India, that is happening in India, and your parents send it on family groups, and you say, appa, yo, it's fake, but how are you going to keep explaining that on a daily basis? So what of the emotional and social ramifications of it something is, like It is this? so sad because uh, it is something that will stay with the person who's gone through this at the end of the day. Whatever said and done, you can go tell that person, I know this is not you. I know this is not you in the video. It is a deep fake video. Whatever said and done, until and unless that person accepts and says, okay, you know, this is okay, it's never going to leave them. It is very psychologically affecting. You can't just wake up one day and see yourself in a position that you're not there. And most of these videos are being used uh, in a way that is only monetizing or helping the other party and totally, you know, you, it's just the image of the person or the, uh, you know, that they're using, that person's morality is completely being destroyed. And that's not right. You can't do that. You, it, it, you have no right to put, use another person's image or video to make yourself rich or to make yourself, you know, seem like you have the power just to put that person down. That is very sad on a very humane level. You know, we have robots doing, you know, restaurants, at the restaurants, we have robotic, uh, you know, we have uh, surgeries being done, everything. But at the end of the day, why we as humans, we have the quality that probably the robots don't have and that is empathy. We, we know how to show empathy. We probably can say, okay, I know you're feeling bad. A robot is not going to say that. It does not matter if you're dead, you're alive, you're feeling bad, sad, nothing matters to a robot. So that human touch should not be lost. We humans should remain humans. We shouldn't become robots as such. Thank you. Thank you. Would any of the panelists like to add something to what Saptami said? Well, Suruchi, I think that what Saptami said is completely right. But you know, we live in a different world today. Mm. And I think that in the last 10 years, as you mentioned, it's been going on for 10 years. We've all been exposed to so much of deep fakery. And I mean, do you even look at anything without taking it with a pinch of salt? You know, I suspect everything that I see on Instagram or Facebook or wherever, I don't believe anything anymore. I look at Modi's speech and I say, this also must be fake. <laughs> because, you know, everything is fake these days. It's just so difficult to understand what is happening. And then besides that, we also live in a world where a Paris Hilton and a Britney Spears released their own fakes. You know, because they wanted the publicity and they felt that a sex tape featuring them would catapult them to the top of the pops, really. And when people themselves are doing it, I mean, I remember Rashmika said, couldn't they find someone with a better figure? You know, she said, who is this woman? I don't look like that. So I don't know whether we are becoming more and more suspicious as a people. And I think it's a very good thing. I think it's very good to suspect everything that you see. Because like again, Saptami said, you can't go and tell a million people that, you know, this is wrong. So how do you counteract it? Well, issue a denial immediately. Don't wait. Don't be scared. Because I think that in many ways, I find a lot of people are very scared of artificial intelligence and what it can do. But I think that we all need to be in a position of control. We have to control AI. AI cannot control us. And AI, at the end of the day, will have its users. I expect AI to find a cure for cancer to find a cure for AIDS. I mean, why not? It could happen, doctor. I'm sure that you know that AI can crunch numbers like no human being can. But can AI have the emotional intelligence of human beings? 
because AI is based on everything that has gone before. It's collective history. It is the sum of all human knowledge. But what about the new, the fresh, which only I think mankind can do? And of course, the best thing is having babies. AI can never do that. <laughs> that I think they will not interfere with. Yes. That's my opinion, That's Suruchi. True. Thanks, Prasad. Nandini, would you like to kind of speak about any of the experiences that you've had with deep fakes? <coughs> Being a celebrity, it is difficult. You keep posting things to get like a fa fan base, to increase your tribe. But it also exposes you to such kind of, you know, malware. Elrigu Namaskara. Um, you know, I studied in MLACWO, Amani College, and this is the first time I'm being inside the campus, and you people are uh, having really very good campus. Uh, you know, it's nice to sit in front of uh, such serious people. <laughs> yeah, coming to your question, Suruchi, uh, I have not experienced that kind of things uh, any time in my lifetime. I, I do not want to even imagine that kind of things in my wildest dreams because that kind of things are really such bad. Uh, when it comes to Rashmika Mandana's ma'ams and, uh, you know, it became a national news. And when it happens to the Taylor Swift, it became an international news. And even we all know Sachin Tendulkar's image being misused for a video game. So I think it's there from many years now. Uh, you know, using actresses' images to the wrong window and leaving it to the internet is been happening from many years. And uh, you know, being an actor, uh, I'm sitting here as a girl first than an artist. So it shouldn't happen to any girl uh, if it comes to privacy, respect. You know, every girl in the nation deserves to have that respect of their privacy. Um, I can't help because uh, being connected to the people, audience is part of my profession. Being active in the social media became part of my profession and I really can't avoid that. So how would you uh, explain, I don't know, the emotional angst that, you know, a person might go through? that goes through something like this? It definitely tear them inside because, you know, any girl will not uh, even imagine to see herself in such kind of videos. Yeah. Uh, so definitely it will break them inside and it feels really very bad for them. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Nanini. Prasad, what would you say? You've been in the industry, you've seen celebrities, you've seen models, you've seen uh, a world where there were photographs and now there's like you know, a smart uh, era where things have changed so drastically. So, uh, according to you, how does a celebrity protect? How does a normal person protect? How, how do you deal with something uh, that could land up to be, you know, debilitating to you? Well, you see, the thing is that everything has such a short shelf life now. Yeah. And sometimes it's better to just wait it out because in five minutes, the next scandal will break and everyone will forget about yesterday's scandal. Everything moves so quickly. So sometimes I think it's better not to take it too seriously. I mean, you girls might one day find yourself at the receiving end of some, you know, random video showing you doing something that you've never done. But besides issuing a denial, going to the police, making the complaint, what can you do? You can't run a cyber cell in your house you know, like the last speaker spoke so wonderfully about the whole aspect of the dark web. You can't monitor the dark web. We have to move on with our lives at some point in time. And I think the best thing to do is really to ignore it as much as possible. You do what you can and you move on. I mean, when I look at the British royal family and the amount of scandals that have been associated with them, quite frankly, I can't remember anything. You know, maybe one or two things about Princess Diana, but even that I'll have difficulty in remembering. So sometimes it's very good to have a short attention span and forget about everything that is negative and everything that's awful and just move on. What can you do really, Suruchi? There is really, I think Dr. Sharma or, you know, Karthik, Karthik. may be able to answer that better, but there's precious little you can do. Yeah. Would you like to add to Dr. Sharma? Uh, I think I've, said. 
basically because defect has become a issue in recent years also and i think the first thing comes the why defect is there in our lifestyle i think as the previous speaker also said somewhere that anonymity comes up into the cyber space anonymity is gives lot of freedom to the other person to create and to circulate then what happens once you create and circulate then it goes to the users then comes the another phenomena which we call fomo fear of missing out something that is fear of missing out something is for the youngsters also to remain active on social media chats and they remain active till night also so that they should not miss out any exciting information but once that excitement comes that excitement leads to circulation of the information where they could have judiciously used their decision making to whether this is the right information to forward or whether this is not the right information to forward and that circulation leads to massive circulation and which creates impact on the particular person for which this information is intended as well as for other things also and then what does this anonymity and fomos create i think that's a in psychiatry and psychology we call regression regression means you move to the previous primitive stages and the internet also promote regression only because sometimes you engage in behavior which is not desirable which is not expected of you and where deep fake is one of them where people feel that anonymously and somewhere they can just circulate and that's why somewhere as i said moral development also comes up because the moral uh, development is getting affected because children get expo access to the devices very young in their lifestyle and they know even though they send any wrong message rather than saying verbally sorry they just delete the message and they say once i delete the message my job is over i don't have to say any so this is the so it means the whole public whole society all stakeholder has to take a responsible role in case if we have to target this kind of development but i think as any person who get affected by deep fake automatically it leads to three stages of reaction one is shock that how does this happening then person always remain in a denial mode they will also engage in repeated checking whether that is the real information whether that is happening or not and the denial further leads to anger and depression and low mood states and other thing and there i think the needs comes then the person is also is in the stage where he doesn't he or she doesn't want to communicate because i think as you see most of the celebrities they have taken approach of communication if you communicate you build up support and then you work out the strategies i think that's remain the milestone if you have to work on the impact of psychological issues related to deep fake and as uh, rightly said that we have to move ahead somewhere we have to acknowledge communicate and move ahead in our lifestyle so doctor one thing uh, that uh, will shock everyone is that the most uh, deep fakes are pornographic in nature and most of them are mapped from celebrity actresses and you know famous people now what is the psychological aspect for the person that it's mapped and why is it so rampant basically because i think the deep fake the underlying uh, the motive is to create a content which get maximum circulation which get maximum forwards and i think with this content i think most of the uh, preferred choices are in the sexting content and most of the time it is in the pornography content and that's why they feel this if this content is there it will get most circulation and that's why this kind of contents are preferred content and definitely if this kind of contents are imposed on anybody it creates lot of psychological distress basic thing is comes i mean though we are saying acknowledge and acceptance but the acceptance doesn't come so easily because they are in the shock state they are in a stage of denial and sometime whether this denial leads to stress related issues whether this denial leads to other kind of psychological problem it depend upon the individual resilience individual protective coping mechanism and other support systems and all so i would like to ask you uh, from an indian perspective the us and uk recently set protocols on social media because of the fake news because of you know deep fakes they've uh, basically made all schools follow some social media usage things so what would you say uh, why is india lacking in this so what what would you say i think the overall government is also taking initiative in this aspects i think a lot of uh, 
uh, policy decision have come up at public level as well as policy level to raise public awareness for healthy and promotive use of social medias and all. But I think it is a all stakeholder has to take a responsible role to uh, maintain their dignity as well as to create action so that other people's dignities also remain intact. I think that becomes a public health concern and all public stakeholders has to work for it. And I think recently even Karnataka government has taken a call that they may plan to have a digital detox center in Karnataka and so that basic thing is to promote the healthy use of social media as well as other technology platforms also. And then that if that happens, Karnataka will become the first state in India to plan this kind of initiative. Thank you, doctor. So what is healthy usage? What's the percentage? I don't think there's a lot because, you know, they say learning starts at the root level. Yeah. We have parents when we were kids, Uta Marspe Kadra, it used to be Ali Chanda Mama yeah. Torskon Uta Marspe. You have a curry money, ma, lika, you know, you'll yes. lose everybody. There's a three year old, four year old kid who comes and he says, Rahul, Rahul. you know, that's happening. That imagine a four year old kid comes up and says that to you. And then we used to have, we, we, what, we, we had rhymes. When we used to, you know, the, we used, mom, our moms used to do the rhymes. They used to teach us rhymes, and you know, that used to be that. Now, Everything is so much, you know, it's, it's all on YouTube. A kid who's three years old knows how to operate the remote. And, you know, that has become such a moment of pride. My kid knows how to use YouTube. My kid knows how to operate the remote. Please don't be proud of it. It's not going to help your kid in any which way in the future. You know, it has to start in the very root level. Go back, make your kid sit on the compound, show them, the, show the kid that, you know, the moon is at this How stage. How to climb today. trees. Yeah, and it, it really has, you know, and because that also has to come with the factor that it's such a fast moving life. Both the parents are working. They need to feed the kid. If they don't feed the kid, the kid's going to fall sick. How are you going to feed the kid? Get the kid, you know, you know, make it sit in front of a screen, screen time, feed the kid. I think it also has to do a lot of, you know, like probably conscious decisions when it comes to parents. Because for now, all the, you know, the reels or anything that you see on Instagram are probably very, very old songs that are coming back. Why weren't the songs viral back then and they're coming back now? You know, because it's, it's accessible to whatever you call the Gen Z, all the people. And, you know, you want to stay very, very in term now. I, I'm a millennial. I want to become a Gen Z. I don't want to remain a millennial. So yes. I will try to learn yes. what the Gen Zs are doing. I want to impress the crowd, right? So that, you know, that feeling of trying to impress somebody by being fake and trying to portray yourself on social media should happen from probably, you know, like the homes, you know, probably check your, you know, your kids, how much screen time they're using, what is it? And yes. If that is done on a, because the government is going to come up with policies, but they're not going to come to every house and check wh how long the kid is going to use the device. The government can't send every, you know, one government official in one house, check what the kid is doing. That cannot be done. It has to come from a very young, you know, root level. Thanks, Aptmi. Now to Karthik, the man with all the answers. <laughs> So, I think months ago there was a robocall using a fake audio of US President Biden uh, urging Democrats not to go for the New, New Hampshire primary. Now, Indians are around the corner with the elections. How do we solve this as a society? The fake uh, news, the fake deep fakes, the garble that's there. So, uh, Saptami used the word uh, empathy, you know, she said, be empathetic. Uh, let me also add to it and say, be skeptical. Uh, so, whatever content you see on online, uh, be skeptical about it. Uh, just think whether the source from which it is coming can be trusted. If something is, if something is outrageous, it probably is not true. So, it, it's better to be skeptical, uh, treat whatever content we see with a bit of skepticism, and uh, trust something only when we are sure, we have verified that, you know, it is uh, worthy of, uh, of our trust. Uh, I mean, 
this is not a new phenomenon, right? In, we have seen, we have all been in WhatsApp groups where we have, you know, family, friends who keep sending, uh, you know, uh, false information. Um, what AI and deep fake uh, is going to do is, it's going to make it more realistic. That it's going to make the false information more realistic. It's going to make the fake news more realistic. So the level of skepticism, if anything, has to increase. Okay. So in terms of what the center is doing, uh, uh, are there any things that you can throw light uh, to the audience with? So this is, a, this is an area where the whole world is grappling with it, right? So uh, there are no easy answers, there are no set answers uh, as of now. Um, if you have seen the, the movie Oppenheimer, you know, you, you, you have seen a bunch of scientists who are grappling with this new discovery, you know, the new invention they have come up with, right? So they have uh, discovered uh, fission and fusion, and then, you know, they know that, you know, this can be used to, you know, uh, create a bomb which can be very powerful, yeah. which, can be, which can be used to stop the war which was going on at that point in time but which can also be, which, which also has the potential to end humanity, right? And that's the question the scientists then were, uh, you know, uh, wondering, you know, what, what approach we should take. If you see, with AI, we are in, in a similar kind of uh, situation, you know. It's, it's, so AI is the cyber equivalent of the nuclear bomb, uh, I, I would say. Um, the difference, the, the key difference is, then, in the 1939-1940, early 40s, it was a bunch of scientists uh, who were, you know, grappling with this question. Today, it's a bunch of technologists in the private sector whose primary motive is profit, yeah. right? But who are trying to also give answers to this question, right? So, how much we should trust uh, them, uh, you know, I'm not uh, too sure. but. Well, you know, if you see uh, last week at the Munich uh, Security Conference, you know, um, all the, uh, you know, big AI players uh, made a pledge that, you know, they will, uh, you know, they will, uh, you know, do their AI deployment, they will develop their AI solutions in a responsible manner. Uh, but I think it's, it's, it's also important for governments to uh, take this uh, seriously. Uh, I think regulation is very important. It's early days yet. Um, after the uh, after the Rashmika Mandana video came out, uh, immediately uh, government of India issued a notification to uh, all the social media platforms that you know uh, if any user complains that you know there is a deep fake of them uh, on any social media platform, they have to take it down within uh, I think 48 hours. So that, that guideline uh, was issued uh, immediately and, uh, and the, the, the Ministry of uh, in, Information Technology has mentioned that, you know, we, they are working on uh, coming up with more detailed regulations for, uh, for tackling deepfakes. It's work in progress uh, as of now. So, I know it's work in progress and I know like countries all over are grappling with it and individuals all over the world are grappling with it. However, you can be ethical, you can get the policies, but if you don't have the tools and you don't have any way to bring them all together, it's not sustainable. And the trajectory of deep fakes and fake news, I think, has, is going to carry on. It's not going to stop. So, what technology taketh, technology giveth, right? So, uh, while, you know, deep fakes are being generated, uh, there are researchers who are working on identification of deep fakes uh, as well, right? So, uh, I think it's a matter of time, you know, we will get solutions, uh, you know, which will uh, help us uh, identify uh, deep fakes as well. But the, the overarching uh, point still remains that, you know, uh, technology is evolving so rapidly that, you know, today it's deep fakes, tomorrow it could be something else. Right, and uh, we we are living in uh, an era where uh, every new technological advance, it, all, all all of these are dual use technologies, right? So it can be used for good purposes, it can be used for bad purposes. So every new technology can be uh, misused, and uh, it's a, it's a it's a cat, cat and mouse game, you know. So you need to keep finding out ways, and you know, use the same technology to uh, to prevent the misuse. 
So what would you say are so, uh, certain things that we can keep in mind as individuals when, you know, forwarding, when looking at mails, when receiving something from somebody else? Again, uh, first point is, you know, be skeptical, uh, you know, uh, be skeptical about, uh, you know, what, whatever you are, uh, you are receiving. Yeah. At the same time, it's also important that we all keep pace with, uh, with the changes in technology, right? Uh, we should know what's the, what's the latest in technology that has been used. Uh, it, it may not be what's, what's, what's been worked on by, by the researchers, but at least, you know, what is in the mainstream, right? It's important we know what's happening in the technology domain and uh, you know what are the ways in which you know it is being used, it is being misused. Uh, I think it's important we we are aware of it on a regular basis. Also, I would like to say that uh, Karnataka and India have cyber crime helplines. They have a cyber bureau, crime bureau. However, the uh, the law is unclear. We are piggy banking on many other laws. So what would you, uh, I mean, how do we get to a policy at least where pr we protect ourselves, like actresses, like Prasad can protect him and his wards and, you know, all of us. Narendra Modi can protect him. Yeah, so re regulations will always play catch up, right? So uh, it's a matter of time before we start ha getting regulations around, around this also. Um, but as of today, it's not really the, the lack of laws, you know, it, it's more of the ability to implement the, the laws that we have today, right? Um, so, uh, so for example, you know, we, we spoke of cyber crime, you know, and, and morning there was a very good panel discussion on, on you know, uh, tackling cyber crimes. Again, it's not the lack of laws which is impeding us when it comes to, you know, tackling uh, cyber crimes. It, it's more of, you know, uh, our ability to, uh, you know, uh, look at the, the new world, the, the new world where crimes can happen remotely, you know, crimes are happening using these communication technologies. And uh, what do we do to, uh, to address this new kind of crimes? Within the existing laws also, it can be addressed. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Sharma, would you like to add on any tips, you know, not to follow media, not to be an Instagram person and just continue to be online all the time. I think you can ask the audience how many of them are addicted to social media. <laughs> yeah. So then we can answer a very specific question from Dr. Sharma. So how many of you uh, are at least spend two hours on social media? <laughs> <laughs> and now your phone tells you how much of time you've spent on social media. So sometimes you can get a shock when you see that figure yeah, yeah. in the evening. Yeah. So. So, Doctor, just uh, a last So, how much on. is healthy? Yeah. So, I think uh, it's a very difficult question that how much is too much. But I think that we have to decide, like, depending upon our needs and how best we can balance. But whatever the work we are doing, we are finding even in Bangalore region, people are using minimum 10 hours a day in mobile phone. So, I think if you're using for 10 hours, definitely. But I think basic criteria, if you have to identify whether you are addicted to social media, this is called 5C approach. The first C stands for craving. Answer can be yes or no, you can judge yourself now itself. If there is a craving for using technology or social media, if answer is yes, that's the first yes toward addiction. Second is control. Are you losing your control over social media use? If that is there, that's a second yes toward addiction. Third is coping. Are you using social media as a method of coping to feel good or to overcome negative mood states? If that is there, that's a third year steward addiction. Fourth is compulsion. Has it become a compulsive user? Have you become a compulsive user? Compulsive user when we say sometimes social media also leads to social media fatigue because you are always on social media. And another phenomenon through social media comes what we call, all of us suffer is called scrolling syndrome. We keep scrolling our mobile phone and that takes away a lot of our time. If that is there, that's a fourth year steward in your lifestyle. And the fifth is consequences. Because of social media, are you developing X, Y, Z consequences? So out of 5C, if you have four in your lifestyle, today is the time to take a call and to work on a healthy use of social media. And the best strategy goes what we call digital fasting. 
Digital fasting is have some time without technology. Have 40 minutes, 60 minutes in your day-to-day -day time without technology, without social media. And use that time to build up communication. Use that time to build up social relationships. Use that time for other quality-based activities. If that happens, definitely your family will appreciate. You will also develop contact. And you will have more social capital rather than social media contacts. And that is where we are lacking in. Thank you. Doctor, one more thing. For those of us who use social media for eight hours and above, and all the ones that put their hands up, uh, what, what are the effects, the very, very serious effects of it? Uh, basically, social media takes away what we say, social contacts, social relationships, and what it promotes is more not promote, I would not say generalize, it promotes everybody, but in some of the cases it promotes social isolation. Because you are always connected, but you are not having losing out your social contacts. So that's the first thing we are losing. Second thing, because of social media, most of us have a rationalization that in the night time I can use social media because sleep is mine. I can delay my sleep. But we have seen if you are using social media during sleeping time, 60 to 90 minutes loss of sleep will definitely happen. So if you are carrying that 60 to 90 minutes sleep deficit, it will affect next day productivity also. Third thing which comes up, because of constant preoccupation, though we have brain has capability of doing multiple tasking, but I think if you are active on social media along with your focus task also, definitely your productivity will go down. And th fourth thing which we are losing out is physical activities. Nowadays we recommend even adults should spend 60 to 90 minutes physical activity every day. But we sacrifice that physical activities for social media or technology use. If all those things get addressed, definitely you will have a healthy use of social media and you will not come across social media fatigue, which sometimes most of us do suffer from. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Now I'd like to open for the next five to, ten, five to eight minutes. Any uh, observations, suggestions, questions? I thoughts? actually had a question for Dr. Sharma. The younger generation are exposed to so much of, you know, uh, information and visual content and all kinds of content. Will, will their brains be wired differently from ours? I mean, I grew up being addicted to Radio Ceylon. That's all we had in our house was a radio. And if I was studying for exams and my parents had gone out, I'd be listening to the radio and waiting for the car to come back. Yeah. The minute I heard the car, I'd go and switch off the radio. So was that an addiction for me? And this is multiplied by a hundred times now. So would you say that the young people over here have differently wired brains? Uh, I think this is a Z generation. Generally, people say where uh, youngsters have, like, it's like they're more active. They can assimilate a lot of information. They can use that information for various productive purpose also. So that way, this is an asset. But I think somewhere when technology use start bringing dysfunctions in their lifestyle, then it becomes a concern for us. And that's why the overall concept goes for balanced use of technology, healthy use of technology. And the overall, even I think there are a lot of insta uh, guidelines have come for youngsters and adolescents. But people are not saying, instead of having guidelines, we should promote digital well-being in each one of us and we should take a conscious call so that we can use our assets for productivity rather than for dysfunction. That's very so, true. And my advice to you all is, make sure your bedtime is set in stone. If you're going to sleep at 11 o'clock, make sure you're in bed by 11 o'clock. Because if you keep extending that time, and one day sleep at 12, and one day sleep at 1, you know, you are not going to be fresh and wonderful the next day. You'll get very little done. And two hours before you sleep, no technology. Two hours, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> half an hour. <laughs> so but definitely I, I recently, minimum half an hour. Half an hour before sleeping time, no technology. Used. Yeah, half an hour I think is <laughs> good. I recently came across an interesting analogy between sugar and uh, content now. You know, so you know, we humans, you know, historically, you know, uh, you know, we humans, you know, historically, you know, uh, we have we have always. Uh, you know, wired to crave for sugar because you know calorie has was always difficult, right? I mean, historically, we were, we were never sure will we get our food tomorrow. You know, it's so so whenever we get a high calorie food, 
we tend to consume it because you know we, we need that calorie probably tomorrow we need to consume and store it but in the last 40 50 years you know uh, calories have become very easy for us to consume and you know that that, that has resulted in you know over consumption of calories and then you know uh, diabetes and all, all the health related uh, issues in the last 20 years we are seeing the equivalent of it in terms of content right again you know uh, historically we have always lacked easy access to content right you know when we were kids if you want to get access to a content we had to go to a library hope that the library has some good books if not go to another library etc etc right today we have all the contents that we need on our fingertips uh, and that overdose of content is also harming us uh, to, to a good extent so you know like how we watch our calories you know what we eat i think it's also important you know we watch how much content we we consume thank you kartik and uh, i want to say that i really got shocked when you when you people said uh, you know you use 8 hours of social media i know it's quite uh, addictive because it's addictive for me also uh, i just want to tell you like what i do i use it for half an hour in a day uh, i'll upload whatever i want it and I'll uninstall it, that's what I do. Because it's so much addictive that all the time, finger will go, uh, hand will go to, yeah, you know, to the phone and we feel like using it. So uninstall it and reinstall it, you know, that's the only solution what I do. Yeah. Thank you. Sapmi, I would like you to send a message to all the malware people who are doing all these uh, ridiculously kind of devastating, hurting things by deep fakes. So a small, like, quick message. Yeah, uh, before that, like doctor was saying, it leads to social isolation, right? So, you know, like, I don't know how many, you know, like, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of them would have, you know, you would have DM'd somebody, some girl, some guy and said, hey, you look pretty, you look beautiful, you look nice, right? But the minute the girl appears in front of them, they don't know what to say. Yeah. They're like, I, I, agree. Go, I totally I agree. I, I've never seen this woman in my life. But on social media, they've stalked her. They know who her father, brother, sister, yeah. mother, everybody is. Like a WhatsApp yeah, relationship. Yeah, they know everything. Yeah. But as soon as they're in front of them, they're like, I don't know the existence of this person. So they've made them into covers, and at least before, I, I think, sir. Where they used to write letters and they had to go give the letter to the woman or the woman has to go give it to a man. Now it's all so easy. They'll send it and they'll think, this girl is not nice, this girl is nice. So I'll unsend the message and send the same message to this girl. It's so easy to do it now. So I mean, social isolation for sure. And like, like Sir said, if you're going to go to bed at 11, then be on the bed at 11. But the problem is, for sure, we're all on the bed at 11, but we keep scrolling on the bed till <laughs> 1 and 2. That's the problem that's come. So, you know, probably like half an hour before, keep it aside. Okay, two sentences, but you message. Know, I just have to add to Saptami's thing. Yeah. They say that if you keep your phone near you, especially when it's charging, it's really not good for you at all. So get into the habit of keeping the phone charging far somewhere away. far away. Far away. Get into bed at 11 and switch off the lights. Otherwise, it's not going to work. If you take your phone to bed with you, it's the worst bed partner in the world. Really. Yeah. <laughs> Two sentences and then we'll take questions from the audience. Only three. Yes. Uh, so I mean, like everybody, like I don't know who these culprits are who are doing these uh, deep fake videos. Please stop them. It's not only harming the individual, it's harming the society on the whole. It's sending a wrong message to people, to the youth. And today, as a country, as India, we have the most number of youth. So, you know, it's sending the wrong message to people out there saying that, you know, it's easy, this is fun, you can do what you want and hamper with anybody's life. Don't do that. You, you, you have no right to hamper anybody else's life. You are only responsible for your own. So please do not engage just for your own monetary gains. Please do not do that. And I hope that the government comes up with, you know, really rigid rules that, you know, probably that leads to, you know, if they can identify the person who's uh, started this, it can, end, you know, probably end up that the person ends up in jail. So probably it becomes very, very serious because it is a very, you know, it, it, it affects the person in a very, very wrong way. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Now we'll take questions. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. I think we had the first volunteer waiting for the question. Go ahead, buddy. Uh, 
Uh, hi, uh, so Ms. Ruchi, I actually have a question for you. So as a representative of uh, Times of India, I want to ask you uh, what role should the media play? Uh, you know, we spoke so much about social media. Yeah. What role should the media play to, uh, you know, be responsible and curb this sensation that deep fakes or fake news actually becomes? Because a lot of this information is also propagated through newspapers, clickbaited articles. So what is your take on that? Okay, uh, I think, thank you. I didn't get your name. Uh, I'm Uday. Uday, Uday. Hi, Uday. Um, I think that uh, the media already plays a big role in terms of awareness. They have articles, they do campaigns, uh, deep fakes and AI is a recent uh, development for the media per se. And that kind of awareness with the media is what I think you all will read and probably desist or don't click on things. And I would say that uh, ethically, we all should be, you know, good individuals. I don't think we should, uh, you know, have some kind of a mal wear towards anybody, be it celebrities or individuals. Uh, apart from that, uh, all media to date do fact check. They have fact checkers so that you know you don't uh, put fake news out, you don't uh, uh, give too much importance to things that create a lot of titillation. So yeah, that's what I would think. Thanks, Suruchi. I want all the audience not to cross talk. Please listen to the panel here, please. And we have the second question here. Hi, I think, hi, Ashwani this side, Ashwani Pariwal. Uh, I think this is a great session, but one question I wanted to ask to the entire panel, uh, more specific to the doctor is, uh, we have been discussing social media addiction, as far as I remember, from 2018. I think that's when Instagram blew up. And, uh, there have been a lot of discussions but ne never have I heard about a concrete solution or solutions that people have been able to accomplish and reduce their time. It's only increasing, right? Uh, one of the only biggest uh, tipping point I saw was banning of TikTok, which actually significantly reduced the time, but that was not due to, uh, in, the, in the benefit of people, but that was rather due to geo geopolitical reasons. Why, why that happened. So do you think something like that is only the solution to this? Because this is a problem that th these guys are hiring psychological engineers to, to create content that you know you keep on just scrolling throughout the day. So you are, uh, in fact, Netflix CEO said, my biggest competitor is sleep. So that's what, that's what he said. So do you think that's the only solution, uh, handling it at, at a compliance level and just banning these things? Both of you can answer. I think generally, because sometimes uh, policy level comes up like to ban or to restrict the use, but that doesn't bring significant change, though it has a impact also. So the overall message goes is uh, promotive and educative message to the go to the public so that they can take their individual decision to work on control. As I'm saying, the work on control can be how to enhance, have a good sleep, how to have a social life, how to have a physical activities, and as well as how to have a productive uh, schedule for yourself. So that's an individual decision, and that can come through more through awareness, more through uh, other stakeholders' involvement, also that everybody reinforce for the healthy use of technology. Thank you, Dr. Karthik. I would uh, probably differ from what Dr. Sharma said. You know. Uh, I think, I think it's time we bring in regulations uh, you know, here. Um, if you see, uh, China has uh, taken the step where they have you know, mandated that gaming companies uh, you know, ensure that kids don't play games for more than, I think, three or four hours uh, in a week, right? So this is the regulation which they have already brought in. Uh, car accelerator, you can't press it further. Yeah, so... Uh, you know, we need to get the balance between, you know, a free choice that we give to our people versus, you know, uh, uh, prevent, uh, protecting them from the harm that, that, that they are uh, going, to, uh, going to have. Um, I think it's important we bring in the regulations. Um, otherwise, we probably are looking at a lost generation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anybody else have anything? 
I used to play a lot of PUBG back then. <laughs> okay. So when PUBG got banned, my mother celebrated so much. She said, yes, finally in the night, I don't have to hear you say, shoot, shoot, yellow, yeah, shoot, shoot. I don't have to hear you say that. So she was very happy with that. Now after that was banned and then, you know, you, you could still download, I didn't. And then after that, you know, got busy with work and everything. Now I have, I have not played the game again. So probably, if, you know, you get into a schedule where you don't have that much free time, where you can sit and waste time during, you know, doing all of this. Yeah, but then again, like, you know, uh, Sir said that regulations are required, but you, it can't be very drastic because we as a country, we, we say freedom of speech, freedom of right. We have that freedom. We can't take away that from people. So probably that also has to come, like it's a balance between what the government has to do and what the individual has to do. It has to come down. I hope that answered your question. Uh, any other questions? Thank you, everyone, and thank you, panelists. It was uh, illuminating, I think. Yes? Yes. It was wonderful, and we'd like to uh, thank everyone for coming and uh, helping us, informing us, and do not be on online and social media for more than half an hour. <laughs> thank you. News first. Nirbhitinda Nimaparavagi.